no straight run of pipe, flow hydraulics and their effect on ultrasonic flow meters. Coming up next on Tech Review. <laughs> The novelty of an ultrasonic flow meter is the ability to measure flow by clamping or hand-holding it on the outside of the pipe. Pretty amazing. In fact, because of this Star Trek-like flow monitoring method of operation, some people think it works everywhere. Well, boys and girls, it is still a flow meter. And like all flow meters, they have some basic requirements. For example, an ultrasonic Doppler works on applications with lots of suspended solids. And an ultrasonic transit time flow meter works on clean liquid applications. But for optimum performance, just like most flow meters, they need some straight run of pipe. Let's review the flow hydraulic requirements for the ultrasonic transit time flow meter. Alrighty. As we've indicated, for a perfect installation, you need some straight run of pipe. And a great application, we refer to it as a symmetrical flow profile. In the picture before you today, we have an illustration of a pipe cutaway. And we have some liquid flowing down this pipe. And these different elliptical shapes here refer to as Reynolds numbers. And they're blunt and more elliptic based upon the flow rate. But one thing that is commonplace is the flow is the fastest at the center and slowest near the pipe wall. This type of configuration normally occurs when you have 10 pipe diameters on this side and five pipe diameters on this side for traditionally pumped flow applications, which usually have a flow rate of between seven, 10 feet per second, something like that, between seven and 10 feet per second. Most pump flows tend to be calibrated and designed for seven feet per second flow rates when they size a pipe size. But it doesn't always happen, but that's a, your generic go-to. So in this case there, this kind of represents like a guy in a motorboat going down a river, uh, fastest in the center, and wake being cast out to the side of the pipe there. So when you have this type of configuration there, symmetrical flow profile, with the 10 pipe diameters here and the 5 pipe diameters here, this is what it will look like inside the pipe. Now the opposite of that, would be called an asymmetrical flow profile, or some people refer to it as a turbulent flow application. In this case there, we have an elbow, and uh, the flow coming through the elbow, notice this is a shorter distance and this is a longer distance, and the flow is gonna come through this elbow, it's gonna tumble when it comes out of the elbow, and until you get to the about 10 pipe diameters, you'll have this symmetrical flow profile over here, but right over here, you have an asymmetrical flow profile, very, very jumbly inside there, like the inside of a washing machine, so to speak. And you're, you're not going to get very good performance with most flow meters if you mounted it right here. So again, a uh, symmetrical flow profile traditionally has 10 on one side and 5 on the downstream side there. An asymmetrical flow profile means you don't have enough straight run of pipe. Now, in using an ultrasonic transit time flow meter, it's basically a math equation. So before the game even starts, you know where to install the transducers. You program your flow meter for your 10-inch pipe, pipe material, uh, OD, ID, process liquid there, and bingo, it says move your sensors across the pipe to these dimensions before you even consider what the flow rate is. It's so, as I said, it's a math equation. So for a symmetrical flow profile, you put a sensor here, put a sensor here, uh, it says this is the spacing. You put it in the pipe, you turn it on, and bing. You transmit from this sensor to this sensor. It's a straight line kind of configuration. And under these conditions, you'll traditionally have your 10 pipe diameters here and your 5 pipe diameters here. And that will be a perfect laboratory application, which you may or may not get in the field. And everything will work accurately and to its optimum performance. Now, if you don't have enough straight run of pipe, uh, the elbow is closer over here, you're going to begin to have some of your asymmetrical. In this case there, notice the profile has moved a little bit from this perfect uh, symmetrical flow profile. And in that case there, it's also transferred the beam farther downstream in this particular case there. So in order for the transducer to work properly, uh, the beam is wider than the, the transducer sensor itself then, then you may actually have to move the sensor to a different location. Uh, we call that prospecting. 
and you don't normally have to do prospecting, but the only time you usually run across a prospecting application is when you have less than desirable straight run of pipe configuration or you have some garbage on the inside of the pipe wall there. And then when you begin to do that, you're slightly off the math equation, so you're not at your optimum performance once you move the transducer away from the calculated spacing dimension. Uh, so you can get some success in an application that you have a little less than desired straight run of pipe if you prospect. Don't prospect unless you can't pick up a signal. Now, the same thing can get even pro progressively work, uh, worse in this case there if you have a variable flow in a short run of pipe. So I have a short run of pipe over here and at low flow rates, the profile looks one way. At medium flow rates, it looks like another way. And the higher flow rates, it looks like another way. We'll get the phone call. I, I put this flow meter on the pipe on Tuesday and it read perfectly. Well, I was reading 100 GPM at that point in time. And now the flow is 200 GPM, for example. And the profile is different. And you may actually have to profile the flow meter to a different location. Again, profiling is not suggested. It's the backup plan if you don't have the appropriate straight run of pipe configuration or a good flow profile symmetrical situation. Uh, uh, other things that can disrupt the whole situation even more so, we were talking about elbows and most straight run of pipe usually start out elbow to elbow spacing. What if you have an intrusive device like a pump or a valve or butterfly valve, an insertion probe, you can have some very high level disruption in the flow profile that can give you all kinds of erroneous information. And of course, what happens when you have too much disruption and too much turbulence with an ultrasonic transit time flow meter, many of them will go into a fault condition and you won't get any data whatsoever. So it won't be uh, less than optimum performance, it will be no performance there. So in the case there where an ultrasonic transit time generically needs uh, clean liquid application, so ultra pure liquids, uh, deionized water, jet fuel, water, uh, sewage, but they're not designed primarily for sludge, things that have high level suspended solids or high level of aeration on, on unpressurized lines. So in this case there, if I had a massive bubbly application there with low pressure and the bubbles weren't compressed there, the bubbles can actually block the beam, or if you had lots of solids or chunks of stuff like in a mining application, which be better service, for example, with an ultrasonic Doppler flow meter than an ultrasonic transit time flow meter, uh, they can also be problematic. Uh, the same situation applies. We were using the, uh, the Z configuration, which went directly across the pipe, or the V configuration, which is a reflection, which is traditionally used on the smaller pipe. It's also referred to as dual path with other types of technologies, but both sensors are on the same side of the pipe. You have a perfect symmetrical flow profile. It's great. If you have an application where you have a short run of pipe, you still have the same situation where you may have to profile or prospect the application if you have a less than desirable straight run of pipe. So bottom line there, if you have an application that looks like this, don't do it. You don't have enough straight run of pipe for your ultrasonic flow meter to work to its optimum performance. So in summary, basic rule of thumb for pumped flow applications is you'd love to have 10 plus 5, 10 pipe diameters downstream from the, an elbow and 5 diameters before the next elbow for optimum flow performance with your ultrasonic transit time flow meter. Uh, so uh, when you go to install a device, take note of your straight run of pipe requirements. If you don't have perfect installations, the next rule of thumb is to go downstream three quarters of the available footprint. And that's where you would put your sensor if you'd have less than desirable straight run of pipe applications. Uh, in that case there, uh, do your investigation because there's some applications, there's just no straight run of pipe as you just saw in the, the previous picture there. So what do you do when you see an application like that? Well, if you really want to monitor flow when you have zero straight run of pipe, it may be time to get the old backhoe out and start doing some digging to find your straight run of pipe requirements again for optimum performance. Thank you for watching our program. For more information on today's subject, check out our show notes listed below or visit our website. If you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. 
As always, we appreciate any comments or suggestions of flow meter technology that you would like to review on this program. This has been Brent Baer for Instruments Direct. See you next time.